Welcome to the Essential Element, the Elements of Education podcast. My name is Christian Page and I'm your host. Uh, We're grateful that you chose to tune in today. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you chose to be here with us. Uh, Today we had a really special conversation. Uh, I think that the proof is in the pudding. Uh, We don't know if your, your work is working unless we can see the receipts. And so today we talked with the most important people in this equation, and that is a series of our students. Uh, Each of them took part in our Next Move internship program uh, at sites all across the city, some of them for-profit, some of them non-profit, some of them in art. Uh, And we talked about their experiences and how it has shaped them to think about their high school and beyond plans, but also uh, what they were able to bring to organizations within our community. Internships are much more than paper pushing or weird jobs in the corner. Our students have actually had significant impact in our community, and so I'm happy to get to showcase the conversation that we had with our next move intern. The art school, we really believe in like relationships, and that is emphasized through a mentor group, and so um, I wholeheartedly believe in that. What do they need? I have to be able to answer that question, and that takes a little bit of time. The biggest teacher, I think, is failure. The brain works in failure. And those failures are actually synapses rewiring themselves in your brain. And think about where you want to be. Because when you find your place, you find your people. And our purpose is attached to people. You know, when there's a phenomenal teacher, uh, when there's a phenomenal educator, when there's a phenomenal mentor, one of the mistakes that we make is we make it look too easy. Like everyone sees the shining moment on stage. No one sees, right, like the hard time spent. All right. Well, welcome to The Essential Element. Uh, Thank you for joining us today. We have um, some of the most important people. I would offer the most important people in the conversation that we've been having up until this point, uh, which is students, right? Uh, The only way that we know if what we're doing works uh, is if we have receipts to be able to show for it. Um, And so we're interested in hearing about your experience, uh, particularly with the next move, your internships, uh, and things that have been of value uh, for you going through this program. And so today, uh, Kelby, Brandon, thank you for joining us. Uh, If we can, right, can you just tell our friends a little bit about who you are, um, what school you attend, what year you're in, and what your internship was? Do you want to go first? Uh, Sure, yeah. (laughs) Um, So I'm Kelby. I'm a junior at IDEA. And my internship was a, I was a TA um, at Wainwright. So I TA'd in a sixth grade classroom, helping kids with their work, that kind of thing. And then after school, I also ran a club with another student. Awesome. Uh, My name is Brandon. And uh, I go to the science, well, Sammy. (laughs) And it stands for for the Science and Math Institute over there by Point Defiance. Uh, my internship was uh, I got to work in the center of urban waters. Essentially, I was working with the city of Tacoma. So okay, um, I was at the center for urban waters, just like Brandon. We, but I was in probably a different department as him. I worked with Stephanie in the environmental services department. Yes. Are you awesome? Uh, Yeah, so I had uh, an architecture firm called BCRA and we just essentially did like architectural drawings and make like sort of like diagrams and buildings and stuff like that. So I just chose it because I want to study design in the future and I felt that it would be a good fit for it. Awesome. Um, I interned at Lakewood Playhouse and I do a lot of theater work. So it was really just finding a theater that was willing to work with a student intern. And, you know, they were like, yeah, we'll take, we'll work with you. We're gonna jump right in. So I'm curious, right, for you all uh, participating in these internships, being a part of the next move, um, how did you decide uh, what site you were gonna land in? How'd you say like, this internship is for me? Yeah, I mean, you know, it it took a long time. You know, we had uh, a period of a few weeks where we were, you know, kind of deliberating over whether internship. Um, and, you know, for me, at least, I, you know, was just talking with um, our, our internship teacher about, you know, where a good fit is. But, you know, something that I think a lot of people don't think about when they're deciding their internship is, um, you know, I know when they're choosing it, they're just like, 
I like cars, so I'm gonna go to this auto body shop, or I like nature, so I'm gonna go to this nature-related internship. Um, but I mean, the, the internship I was at, I, I don't really like screen printing. You know, I didn't know what screen printing was before, and I don't intend to go into screen printing, um, but I chose it anyways because I knew that I would still get that valuable experience out of it. Um, you know, I got a lot of industry knowledge and a lot of technical knowledge that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise, and it was still a really great internship. Um, so yeah, definitely, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter which site you go to as long as you're really embracing it and trying to learn the most from it. Yeah. And Jay, where did you land? Um, I landed at Cold Graphic Solutions. Um, it's just down in Fircrest. Um, it's uh, not little, but it's a, you know, they screen print things, um, digitally print things, uh, you know, signage, um, you know, coffee, uh, uh, big in the coffee industry right now. They're doing a lot of graphical stuff for them. Um, you know, just a lot of behind the scenes graphics that you're like, you know, that had to be printed somewhere. And a lot of times that's cool graphic solutions. Awesome. Cool. Mason, where did you land? How did you say, you know, this is the one, this is the place I'm supposed to go. So I'll take it back to my internship classroom. Actually, I was in fourth period and I was sitting next to my friend and I was like, dude, we're going to make money, right? We got to, we got to get rich. I'm going to the top, like on the top. You want to see me up there? Yeah. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, how am I going to do that? So I go, I want to own apartments. And I start a little diagram. If I rent out a room for 1500 a month, that's, you know, 20 apartment room. That's like 75K, I think maybe a month. That's almost a million a year. I was like, that's it right there. So I brought it to, brought that to Alexa, my internship teacher. And she was like, dude, I do that right now. I have a, I'm my own apartment slash like, uh, it's a real no, residential and commercial apartment. She owns it and she runs it all like almost by herself. And I thought that was so cool. So I was like, I want to do that. I want to own, own own property, own, own land, houses, homes. And she's like, best choice reality. You're, you're going to go with that. You're going to drop everything else and run with your, 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 your money plan. Because originally I wanted to be a marine biologist. So I just did a whole 180 and now I'm set on a career in real estate. Yeah, yeah. It could be both, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I think yeah. that money is real estate and marine biology is more of a hobby. I can always, you know, get my diver's license and go in the water. Like nothing stopped me from doing that. So Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm curious about this, right? Because there's, you all hear, you hear people argue often. Right. And I think that there are some things that an internship provides you that a classroom never could. Right. Like some things you have to learn from experience. Uh, we make the joke all the time, like raising our kids, like sometimes you have to find out that the stove is hot. And the only way that you can find out is by touching it. You know what I mean? My kids don't touch the stove, just so you know. <laughs> right. But uh, I, th I think it's important. Like wh what what did you learn in the field? What did you learn in your internship um, that you may not have been able to learn in the classroom? Um, I learned that I don't really want to work with middle schoolers. You know, I was with sixth graders and they were really nice. But one day I went into a seventh and eighth grade classroom and that was my last day in that classroom. <laughs> I did not. And I think that's one of the big values of internship. Like you can learn what you don't do and don't like. And it's like being in that sixth grade classroom, I got to learn from that teacher how important relationship building is and how important the relationship with other teachers and your coworkers is. Um, and how valuable that is. And then also how valuable it is to know, like, I don't want to do this. And I think that's something that internship offers. So you don't like, you know, waste your money on an education and then hate what you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can I ask what happened on the day? Like what, what made you, what was the definitive moment that you said 13 year olds are not for me? They were just so like rowdy. Like every time the teacher would be like, hey, you guys got to calm down. They would just start yelling again. And they were not very nice. They were kind of rude. They, they just said some like, they would just say things that were so out of pocket and random. It was just like, I'm not, this isn't for me. You know, like maybe it's because I'm like a high schooler and they had, that's like right when the age when you like have no respect for authority. So maybe it's because I'm a high schooler trying to be like, I'm a TA, but they just did not vibe with me. And you know what? That's okay. I didn't vibe with them either. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I hear that, right? Mm -hmm. I've spent majority of my career in education, and most of it has been <laughs> with at least ninth grade or higher. And I think mm -hmm. everybody who works in middle schools or elementary schools are actually superheroes, right? Yeah, so I, uh, yeah. I want to teach kindergarten, um, and you know that this the internship definitely cemented that because I'm 
you know, I my mom is a middle school teacher and I've heard her horror, horror stories. And then I heard, I witnessed more horror stories and I'm like, you know what, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, I, I love that, uh, the turning point space, whether it be like throwing in the lion's den, right? Like we make a joke all the time, like some people got to learn how to swim in a swimming pool. Some people get thrown into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and you just gotta have to figure it out, right? There's still the safety net, there's still somebody who has your back, right? But, um, you know, different approaches for different people. But it's mm -hmm. awesome to know that you all got your footing. Um, I'm curious to know this, right? Like you have uh, an on-site mentor, um, a supervisor per se, right? What was your relationship like with them? Um, what was the story of how you all developed the relationship? There was a sort of communication struggle at the beginning you know, there usually there is, you know, you have to work together, you have to figure out what's gonna work best for you. And once we got past that, and we were able to open the communication and talk to each other, our relationship was, you know, still very professional, but it was easier to go to him and be like, hey, you know, this is what I need help with, or this is what I don't need help with, or this is my schedule, can we work together on this? So the, it was like a very professional still, but you know, just communication was, with it being open was, it was still very flexible and, you know, a great place for me to grow within that relationship. Uh, what, what, can I ask, what was the communication struggle? Was it like, you're using this, I'm using this? Was it, we don't have the same language? Um, I've, so I did a theater and I was, working on designing the lights for their show. And I, you know, I'm still learning, but I have a pretty great grasp on um, elements. And of course, there's always more for me to learn, but my site supervisor was expecting professional level work while I was being unpaid and treat, but still treating me like a child. Mm -hmm. um, which was not something that I was okay with. I'm like, you don't get to pick and choose how much you respect me and how much you expect from me. Like you respect me a little, but you want me to do a lot. And so once I was like, hey, that's not gonna work for me. We need to change this. And I expressed that boundary and I communicated, we were able to change that. And from like moving forward, that was something that he learned from and that was something that I learned from. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, self-advocacy. Are you just a boss regularly? That's just Yeah, what can I say? I like it. I like it. That's amazing. Momo, Derek, what uh, was your relationship like with your site okay. supervisor? Yeah, I mean, mostly, I mean, there wasn't really that much interesting stuff about it. I mean, it was just like a connection, like where we just, he, they, uh, it was two of them actually. So they were both architects and they both worked for the company for about like five to 10 years, I think. And uh, yeah, they just said, okay, you know, do this and I do it. But the connection, I guess, the really deep part to it was when, uh, for example, they would check up on my work and ask about what I'm doing. And then they would give their own like insight and their own prior experience and use it to help me out with stuff. And yeah, because they can relate to when they did projects like what we did. Um, I had like a presentation on a pavilion project that I had to do, and they also did that back in college, so they could actually connect in that area. Well, well, what about you? What was your relationship like with your site director? It was pretty, we were pretty close. We would always have lunch together out of our internship time, which is pretty cool. She was very friendly. She wasn't all serious, so I got comfortable pretty quick. And that really helped me, because I was like, I was really nervous, because it's a new environment, and I didn't know what to expect. Uh. Can I ask you, because I think sometimes we graze over this, the important, uh, importance of relationships. Mm -hmm. Like, how did having lunch and being loose increase your confidence in the space? It just really made me more comfortable. I was like, didn't have to put up a front, what I said, yeah. yeah. And I could just be myself, show her what I could do when I'm not nervous, when I'm at my best. It was really nice. Oh. My supervisor, quotation marks, you know, the person who was you know, signed up to supervise me really quickly. We realized that he was not going to be able to have enough time to really kind of babysit me 24 seven, which I think is actually really a good thing because I'm quite used to, you know, just in school, um, you know, having somebody that's there for me, which is a really good thing. 
Um, but an internship, you know, I kind of had to be a little bit more independent. I had to go seek help from a lot of other employees that were maybe more knowledgeable about the specific task that I was doing. Um, you know, and if I needed administrative help, I would totally go to my supervisor. Um, you know, but, you know, knowing that all the employees at the, the company were behind my back, um, or not behind my back, behind so they me. They were gossiping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know they were they were ready to help me. You know whenever I needed something from them, and they were always super you know passionate and 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 willing to to give me that support. Um, you know I kind of see you know pretty much the whole company as my supervisors at that point because they were all you know they all played a role in in my journey at the company. That's awesome. What about you? I had two main like supervisors the ceo of best choice rochelle wilhite and the lead sales manager um candace frazier they were both very eye-opening and very compelling on what they do and they're really passionate about the work that they you know get to do um rochelle started the company in 2013 2014 i'm pretty sure and i think the coolest thing i got to learn from her was that you don't like you don't know what's gonna happen next so always keep your like mind open never like be set, always have like a, like a backup plan. That was pretty cool. Man, that's awesome. Uh, so curious for you all, right? Because and again, we kind of have a little bit of misconception about like <laughs> maybe what high school students are able to do, yeah. right? And sometimes internships result to go make copies, um, go do menial tasks in the corner, right? And we'll report back. But it sounds like your experiences were different. <laughs> And so, uh, with Next Move being hands on, with you getting opportunities to really dive into something, what were some of the projects that you were involved with, and what's maybe one of the tasks or outcomes that you're most proud of? I guess for me, like a cool like project that I was involved with was just um, meetings because they had meetings inside of the office, and they were actually discussing like actual projects that they're making that are actual like confidential things, and the fact that they allowed us like I think there were four. Yeah, four of us on site, uh, just all three other kids from IDEA and me as well. And the fact that they like had us in the offices like during the time and they showed us like, oh, this is some, you know, house that we're trying to construct. It was like, oh, wow, you know, you're letting a high schooler in there to see it. You know, I felt like they value me like beyond just my age and also my skills as well. So and yeah, that and as like the project stuff, I guess. The stuff that they had us do wasn't just like, you know, just tests around the office. They actually had us like make projects and actually present them in front of everyone at the office. And it gave us like, I guess, like a voice of our own creativity and our own skills. So I don't know. I don't know what kind of internship people <laughs> did back then, but I think now like it's times are changing and stuff. So uh, we're able to do a lot of stuff that mostly people who are post college aged or at least like in college would, you know, only dream of doing so yeah ah one more raven i i did a lot you know i worked on shows i learned um box office i learned how to make phone calls which has really helped my ability to talk in front of people but i think one of the things that i was most proud of was the last show that they were doing that i was interning with which was love loss and what i wore i was also doing the show at soda the prom which both of them are done running now and you know they were opening at the same time so i had to split my time between going to lakewood and working with them on that and staying at our school and we're doing my job there so i was really proud of how i handled the communication between that how i worked with both sides to be like hey this is what's going on but that doesn't mean that i want to drop one or the other and, you know, maybe the end products weren't my absolute perfect work that I've ever done, but it really helped me grow and learn how to multitask that way and how to work on being able to communicate with, there's another, <laughs> there's that word again, crazy, communicate with uh, both sides and allow myself to be able to take a step back and be like, hey, you know, no matter how much I want to do both of these things and want them both to be perfect, I can't do everything for both of them. And both sides were very like accepting of that. And they were very great with working with me on how, what I could do and what I couldn't do. 
And, you know, even though the work that I did wasn't 100%, it was still good. And it was, I still was able to help with both sides. And I think that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. Man, multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> Communicating, doing it all. That's awesome. Uh, Momo, what about you? What, what, what kind of tasks were you involved with? What kind of things did you get your hands on? What are you most proud of? The city really wanted like younger voices in their workplace. They wanted us to tell them our views and our experiences. So I had to make a lot of PowerPoints for their meetings. It was very nerve wracking because I didn't know what to research, put in it, and I didn't know what they wanted to know or get out of it. So it was very stressful, but I really liked it. Um, the last PowerPoint I did was about housing. And I was like, "This? do they really want me to do something about housing? Because they're pretty knowledgeable in it already. And I don't know anything about it, but it went pretty well. There was like 40 people in the room. I also think I did well, so, which is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, at the start, kind of just, you know, my first few days, first few weeks, um, it you know, my my internship, they had never had an intern from Next Move before. This was their first time. Um, so they were kind of, you know, like, who is this guy? You know, he's a high schooler, so he's, you know, probably not that useful. Um, and so they were, you know, assigning me some pretty menial tasks um, just to, you know, see where I was going, um, see what they were going to do with me. Um, and, you know, we we sort of built up from there in, in just trust and knowledge of you know, knowledge of my abilities as an intern and my knowledge of, you know, my role in the company um, as their intern, um, you know, building up to maybe some less low stakes stuff. Uh, I kind of the big moment was um, they purchased a laser engraving machine and they didn't really know how to use it. Um, and in my not so extensive experience at IDEA with um, one of our teachers laser engraving machines. I learned a little bit about it. Um, and so they just grabbed on. They're like, oh my gosh, you know how to use the laser. Um, and that gave me a really, really good opportunity to show them, yeah, I can be useful. Um, they had an order that they had to complete using the laser engraving machine and they had me help out with that. And I would say um, that I was you know, relatively instrumental in, in getting that you know, completed and, and you know, completed to a quality level. And that was, you know, one of the things that for me and them, I think, you know, showed each other that we, you know, they can trust me and that, you know, I can trust them to be there to help me, um, you know, gain that trust. It was, I, it was so interesting after that kind of seeing, you know, all the various employees seeing me a little bit differently is like, you know, this person can actually be useful rather than just sitting at the table and putting Velcro on the backs of things. Uh, it was really, really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I think um, a difficult and also like positive moment I had was realizing that making cold calls on a Monday at four o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> is not a good idea. Um, I maybe received or um, got to talk to one person on a Monday and it was not the best um, call. But on a Thursday at four o'clock, that's a different story. Thursday, people are more like, like I got more answers and I was able to talk to more people and like let them know, you know, your agent is, is retiring. So I think that was kind of cool is figuring out like if you want to be a, um, a realtor, when the best time is to make those calls and kind of plan accordingly to make sure you can get the most feedback. Um, yeah. Also, I uh, started a multi-million dollar um, like sub business within Best Choice. It's tell us cool. about that. What, what's right, the, what's right. the so it's called, If it's proprietary, don't tell us because you got to. <laughs> no, this, this okay. is, this is good. Right, this is good. It's called the Gateway Program. So what it is, is they analyze a retiring agent and they're like, OK, you've done X amount of sales. You have all of these like houses that you've sold to. But since you're leaving, you're going to leave all these people that bought a house through you like empty handed. When they go to sell their house, they're going to they're going to realize that their agent is gone. Yeah. So what I did was I took all the data and all of the addresses, phone numbers um, and emails and I put it all into a spreadsheet. And then from that spreadsheet, I put it into Chime, which is their like uh, CRM. And then I made cold calls to tell that each person that their agent was going to retire and that Best Choice was still there to help them. And that is a, um, a program that I essentially created with a little bit of help 
I mean, yeah, I was a big help, but um, it's to be like forever used. Like the, it's it's a uh, for any agent that's going to retire, they're going to take all that data. And someone's going to do all the work and then call everyone and tell them the best choice is still there. If they want to go sell their house or move on, they can sell back their best choice. It was pretty cool. Um, I think at the beginning, kind of getting students to like trust me and like want to talk to me because they were all like kind of scared of me at first because it's like, you know, 17 year old coming into like an 11 year old classroom being like, oh, I'm here to help you. It's just kind of like a scary teenager. But I think like after they realized like it's just Kelby, um, she's just a teenager. They really liked having me around. Um, I really got to help them with a lot of their projects. Um, like I would like sit in the back of class with a couple students and I would just be like, I would just help them with their classwork when they were doing all class activities or I would like go outside in the hall and I would work with them. And it was, it's so fun to like hear her, hear my uh, teachers like stories. Um, oh, this student was like, where's Kelby? I'm, I need her, she helps me so much with my work. I can, only, but I'm only there for like two days a week. Yeah. Um, and just like getting to know like certain students in her like community period. And they're always like making jokes with me and saying hi to me in the halls. And like just being able to like, like helping and talk to students was like a huge thing of what I did. And just like getting really that like kind of like teacher one-on-one -on -one thing was the main thing that I did. And it was, it was so fun. I love working. I loved working with the kids. It was great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, Brandon, tell us something about, about, about your work. About things that you got to be involved in. Whew. Okay. <laughs> it, it's like a lot of things. Um, I think at first we were just going through like recycling centers around Tacoma. We were just seeing how um, how the garbage and recyclables were being processed in Tacoma and, and the people's experiences about you know doing that. And I feel like many people undermine you know jobs like that. Cause they're, they're like, they want to push, parents want to push their kids to become better and like better, efficient and everything, you know, make their lives like for themselves and everything, like try to get comfortable in the world. And I feel like, you know, those people are, are really like, you know, I, I, feel, I feel like they should be shouted out more because they, they're, they're for people who, you know, who don't know what they're going to do, you know, like, you know, there's some high schoolers who don't know what they're gonna do after college, you know, or college students who don't know what they're gonna do afterwards, you know? There's there's like the city of Tacoma just in general can help you find a job and find um, what you wanna learn about. And I, I feel like it, it brought me back to like, dang, you know, like this the city of Tacoma was like offering you like, you know, to pay for college and pay for like multiple stuff, you know, stuff for you. And it, it, it's just like fat, it kind of like opened my eyes. It was like very eye opening because, um, you know, I would just hear my mom say, don't become a garbage man. Cause the garbage man, like people, they're not gonna earn that much money. They don't earn that much. They they earn they earn more. Yeah, they're like they earn bank. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know until like I was there, you know, like, uh, especially like the jobs they do, they're not like boring jobs. They're like pretty cool jobs, you know? Like uh, I was talking to one of the the people over there and uh, we were talking about like how cool it is, you know, machining the big machines, you know, like to crush the garbage and everything. And they're like, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's very stress relieving and everything. <laughs> and it was just, it was just, uh, we were just having fun pretty much. And they were having fun. It wasn't like, you know, they didn't, they didn't like their job. They loved their job at the end of the day. And m multiple people there are like, you know, they're, they're still like, some are in college still. And some are like, at, you know, already have degrees up and everything because them, because of the result of them working in, in the city of Tacoma. And I, I feel like, you know, uh, that was kind of like shut out for me, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not necessarily looking for a job there, but, you know, like I kind of have that safety net, you know, like, you know, that back backup job, you know, it's like, you know, if everything goes wrong, you know, like I there's like people out there who give who'd give me a job, pay for my college and everything, my tuition and just come work for them and everything. And I, I just found that fascinating. Um. 
man, that's, you all got some valuable knowledge. And I love that turning point conversation, right? Of finding yourself in like, no, 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 I'm here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know how to do this and I know how to work it. Uh, and then also finding out things that you can only know from experience, right? Like, I don't think that that's in the manual. Like, don't make cold calls yeah. at 4 p.m. <laughs> on Monday, right? But a really great place to figure this out. Do you all seem like you've had fantastic um, experiences in your internship? It's like you've built some good relationships with people in the community. And whether you find yourself like dead set on being rich through real estate or maybe this screen printing thing is not for me, um, sounds like both of them have been valuable experiences. I'm curious to know, right? And kind of as our, our wrap up, our lightning round, um, what's one thing that you'll never forget uh, from this internship experience, whether it be advice, or whether it be something that you take away in the way that it shaped you. But what's one thing that you'll never forget from this experience? Something that I'll never forget is just how profoundly different the experience was to what I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, I went into it thinking, like, I got this. I've made things before. I've used a printer. Um, I'm going to totally rock this thing. And I went there and it was just a whole whole different environment to what I was envisioning in my head. Um, so it, it took some time for me to, to adjust um, and to really, you know, get the get the groove of things going on there. Um, you know, and that's that's something that I hadn't again, hadn't really had the chance to do before, just in kind of the soft, comfortable environment of school. You know, you go there and you roughly have an idea of what it's going to be like. It might be a little bit different, but it's not going to be just this whole blast of something new. Um, like it is an internship, I really, I had to put effort into adjusting and paying attention to what was going on around me to make sure that I was doing the best I could in that environment. Um, so I'm going to, you know, definitely take all that, you know, all that learning and adjustment that I had to do into account when, if I go into, um, you know, the field, uh, of, of, you know, some sort of engineering or definitely in college, I'm sure it's going to be a similar thing. Awesome. Awesome. Um, one thing I'll never forget is I was doing um, house comparisons, taking a certain house and looking within a like mile or two radius um, with the like size of the house, price, bedrooms, all that, like what makes a house essentially and trying to find more houses like it to kind of find a good price to put a house in the market. And um, Candace Frazier, she said to me that real estate is the most important job. The world revolves around it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, everything that is like built is sold and all of the buildings have been sold to real estate property is still real estate like it's such a crazy fundamental thing that i don't think i never knew that was that important like i thought that was pretty cool just to step back and realize that yeah the world is all land and you have to it's either sold or rented out or so something like that where it's like it's big it's behind the scenes it's real estate is very uh a necessity i guess i guess like the main thing i'd say is just um don't always like try to do something new or try to do something that you might not always think you like um because even though i did do architecture which is quite similar to what i want to do in the future there's still some sides of it that i wasn't really as interested in like civil engineering because like what like what do they do like build bridges and make parks like okay <laughs> but you know when i actually saw it i was like huh this is pretty interesting you know i can use this for like stuff like i want to do in the future so like don't just always limit your options i mean like if you don't if you really hate like becoming a plumber like i wouldn't recommend doing that but like anything else like if you're like and about it, maybe at least try and see, you know, where that goes, because, you know, you can never expect or like the outcomes that you get might not exactly be what you expected initially. So, yeah, uh, most definitely. Um, my advice was it wasn't something I wanted to do, but I really wanted the experience in it. And I'm glad I did it. It really helped finalize what I wanted to do in the future, thankfully. So my advice, just just enjoy it, no matter, even if you don't like it, so, yes. I I'll, said it before, I'll say it again, don't expect it to be easy. It's not going to be, it can be fun, it can be something that you're willing to put all your effort into, but if you go into it expecting it to be like an easy A or, you know, something that you can just do with your eyes closed, then you're not going to get anything out of it. 
and going into it being like this is something that's going to take energy and take effort and being like accepting of that and being like yeah whether it's something that you want to do or it's something that you were told to do just going into it being like this isn't going to be easy but i'm going to do it and i'm going to like doing it no one can tell me that i can't like doing it not even me then you're going to have a great like much better time than you would if you went into it being like oh this is going to be boring this is going to be easy and you're going to take so much away from it um i don't think i'm ever going to forget the students that i worked with um getting to know them was definitely the highlight as well as being able to come back to this teacher who made such an impact on me when i was in middle school and definitely affected my pathway so heavily to go back to her and learn from her again and for her to like really like shape my career um with her like her own like teachings and then as well as like learning from her students too you know not just me helping them but then helping me is definitely the biggest takeaway like these students made a really big impact on me um and they're all just like the sweetest little kids so you know i'm not gonna forget that um 30 seconds oh that's <laughs> yeah yeah Short i'm time. not timing you you'll be all right uh, <laughs> um something i won't forget about internship right yeah, yeah. What's one thing that you learned? How's it shaped you? What will you not forget? I will not forget the people who have helped me in my internship. Definitely uh, the people who have showed me the path of various other jobs and careers that are in the city of Tacoma. And I feel like um, I just gained a lot of knowledge just being an intern there. And uh, it was really fascinating. And I got many skills out of it. You all are are shining stars in this conversation. I'm grateful that I got the opportunity to sit down with you. Uh, it sounds like your internships experiences have been amazing uh, and grateful to have some time to be able to digest those experiences with you. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for hanging out and I'm sure I'll see you all again too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. Elements of Education is a 501c3 nonprofit organization in Tacoma, Washington, dedicated to changing public education to better serve the specific and diverse needs of students in our public schools. For more information about how you can support the work that we do, please visit elementsofed.org, or you can find us on Instagram at Elements of Education or on our website.